to uh, rig up the team, get them out of the trailer, put them in front of the car, and just see where this goes. I can see a little bit of the road already on the map. Don't know if you can see it here. It doesn't say anything about possible obstacles like gates and, you know, ferris. What's a ferris in English? It's like the thing that you use to not have the sheep cross over into another area. But the good thing about the car is we can stop and put the dogs back in the trailer if it doesn't work. So. Let's do it. I came out of the car and I thought one of the dogs is making a lot of noise, right? So I actually got a little bit worried because when they start to make this kind of noise, something's up. And then I realized it's actually the machine over there. It's the Kraftwerk. Absolutely ridiculous. By the way, check these dogs out. They're steaming. These guys really want to go. Hot bloods. Eh? They really want to run. Come on then. Get out there. <laughs> See Sahara is in the trailer now. Hey Sahara. Okay, I'm gonna take all the other dogs out when I have the line in front of the car because then it's a little bit easier to harness them and put them in front of the team. I brought also a new cable because the cable broke on the last run. This is where we queued at. <laughs> Sometimes I, I see so many dogs running and I'm like, one of you guys come. <laughs> All of you listen. I think it's, it's like, you know, my mom used to do this. We were four kids and two dogs in the house. And I'm the youngest kid, so my mom would actually go like, and she would then say the two dogs first. This was the, the really insulting part. She would be like, Kenzo! <laughs> I'd be like, okay. So I'm not just the youngest, I'm also below the dogs. Lovely. Skill! Skill! Come! It's like, I'll come when I'm coming. Why are you bullying me? Skill! Come here! Yeah, wrong side of the car. Come here! Wrong human! Skill! Skill! He's like, wrong human dog. Come here! Just putting on his smoking, you know, his tuxedo, so he can go to work. There you go, working clothes for you. So now I'm just harnessing them up. Oh, hello. Good morning. This is one of the puppies. Uh, one of the puppies of this exact dog. So, harnessing them up. And then put some of them in the team and then release more of them and then harness them up and put those in the team. It's kind of a routine and it's very important to be uh, consistent. So this is kind of the same thing I always do. I arrive, let them run free a little bit so they can pee and poop and do their thing. And then we put them in the team. It's red loop. Because I think I don't want to have these, you know, crazy half wild animals in a cage and I have to, you know, hustle them into the team. I'd rather have dogs that are able to be free, run around, enjoy life, pee everywhere, eat the camera, and then go into the team. Hey, Atma. Run ya. Run ya. <laughs> Next. Reporting. Run ya, reporting. You let her go again, and she runs around. This machine is pretty scary. I think we have everybody that we wanted to harness now.
I, I think some of you might be wondering why we are training with the car and the trailer. And I would love to explain that. It's because we used to have two troll wagons and a troll wagon is about as ugly as it sounds, right? It's, <laughs> it's a totally yellow high visibility wagon with ATV brakes that allows a musher to train the dogs without using an engine. So it's eco-friendly, it's nice for the terrain, it doesn't disturb anything. And it has decent brakes. Uh, one of them sadly got stolen during the summer. We don't really know why and it's kind of a shock in the dog world as well because nobody does that usually. And the other one currently struggles with the brakes. So we have pretty bad brakes. That means if we take such an eager dog team out on a wagon that weighs about 125 kilos and has bad brakes, we can't slow them down enough. So this easily becomes dangerous. That's why we are training with the car. We have better braking. We can help them on the uphills. It just becomes safer for the dogs and safer for us. It's also very comfortable because now I can just sit here, listen to the radio, drink coffee, have heating in the car. I, I don't really feel, I feel a bit guilty, if you know what I mean, about doing this, but okay. I've been spending the last nine years out in the wilderness, in the rain, in the snow. Maybe I deserved one autumn with a bit, a bit, little bit more comfort. Foggy shit. We have a car behind us. It's a race. The race is on. So, no, I'm just gonna let this guy pass. So, right, line out, line out, Claudia. Hey, good to see that. Yeah, line out, Claudia. Line out, Claudia, Claudia. Hey, skip, come down. Look at the steam of these guys, they are just steaming. Give them some chance to drink a bit. I think I'm going to put another lead dog in the front. Go. Guru always wants to be in the front, so now I take him out. This puppy is going to go back into the trailer together with the other puppy. And then we're going to put Melis in the You can't take the harness off because it's licking me so much. Rule out. French kisses from the doghouse. These puppies are just one year old, so they cannot run quite as far. They get a bit of a free time now. Look at this though. Jesus. It's autumn training. Trying to get the dogs to get into uh, shape for the winter time. Also training the race team at the same time as training some puppies. We got some puppies running loose. Um, just switching around some dogs. Everybody is in really, really good shape. At the moment we're training about 28 kilometers up to 36 maximum. Trying to get as much elevation as we, as we can. You can see the trail goes pretty steep up. It has been going steep up straight from the start. And on the way back it will be going mostly downhill. So we'll put the car in neutral and just roll after them.
degree, degree. It's okay. Okay. Uh, can you turn off the camera? Because I feel a bit of pressure. Hi, it's Office Kenzo. So here we are editing the video and we found out that we are actually missing a pretty crucial part of information. Um, I asked Sandra to put the camera down for a second because sometimes it's really good to have an extra pair of hands. Basically what happened was we had to go around uh, a couple of rocks. It was a very difficult maneuver. So uh, we hit the rock so hard that we actually ended up losing the tire. That's what happened. Anyway, let's go back to the video. Broke. The actual bolt broke and now it's really hot. There's been so much friction. The wheel is really warm. Ah, look at the steam coming off of that thing. Okay, so here's what happened, right? It broke. <laughs> I am not a mechanic, but my research leads me to believe that it broke. It's really hot. So now we got the wheel back and probably fix this later. Time to continue training. The whole model of driving dogs is just keep moving forward. Never give up. Whether you lose your wheels, keep going. Whether you lose dogs. Wait, we don't lose dogs. Just keep going. <laughs> this this guy over here. He's like the ultimate snow anchor, you know, he just sits, he just sits in one place and he chills. I've only ever met one other dog like this and that guy was called Ivan, Ivan the Terrible. But this guy, Atna, he's so awesome. I'm gonna call him Atna the Awesome, he just sits. You're a snow anchor, you know. You jelly, you jelly. There's your rainbow, Sander. Now we just need to put the horn there and then we got rainbow and unicorn. <laughs> Good thing we have a double axle trailer. I think we can just continue as usual. Let's just make sure we don't lose anything here. Wow, that got pretty slow. It's not, it, it, it doesn't, it's not as bad as it looks though, because you see the actual frame is fine. It's just that the braking caliper did not like that so much. Let's take off all the parts that we could lose in the nature. We don't want to ruin nature, right? With our modernized mess. There you go. The rest is pretty stuck, so that's gonna stay. Be responsible. I think we're ready to go, that's the cue guys. On still my spring. Sprinkles man. Oh! There you go. Sorry, did I screw you? I want to put it back, but you... No, I'm not going to. You're evil. And now I even wasted them, I just threw them all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, mission failed. Mission get the sprinkle failed miserably. Hello. Hello. Boy, everybody did so good. I'm, I'm thanking the dogs. Everybody did a very good job, so I'm just saying thanks and I'm giving them a pat on the head. And I will take the lines out. So I'll take all the harnesses off, let them run free a little bit so they can pee one more time and then I'll put them in the trailer. Oops, can you just hear? Oops. Good. Hop, hop. She just needs the right approach. This is the problem, right? Dogs don't really do geometry. Why don't you go over here first, and then you turn around, and then you just go in. Hey, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh my God, you just figured it out. Yeah. I just have to do this. You have to teach them. Pit, pit, hop, hop, okay, hop, hop. Yeah, so oh, bra. Take your time. 
Huh? Like, he takes his time. Shouldn't tell him to take his time. Go in. Oop. Go in. Yep. So bright. Okay, that's all the dogs. Clean up the line. Clean up the harnesses. Time to go home. Time to take all the dogs home. We just got everybody out of the car. And now everybody is running free. This is probably one of my favorite parts of training. Everybody's so nice and relaxed. Just walking. Big smiles on everybody's face, including mine. Going home, giving them some food. And then for them, the day is pretty much over. I love how they can all run free like this. It just gives me so much freedom and so much flexibility in the training. So yeah, it's really good. Only good things. Here we are approaching the dog yard again. Everybody just playing around. Good socializing. Waiting for me to open the gate. Trying to, trying to get some grass bits in their mouth. What a nice pack. All right, guys. So we just open the gate so you can go in. There you go. Off you go. In, in, in. Chop, chop, chop. Like old school soldiers. Come on. Huh? Yeah, Gomda. Hi, everybody. Come. Yeah, yeah. Seppa. It's good. Come on. Good girl. And the dogs usually go home because they know they know where they live, so they go to their houses and wait for, wait for me to tie them up. The Ukraine in this car, of glass, Sahara, hardly anything else for you to see, Sahara.